This conference will now be recorded. Correct. The session, what we're actually having for this next, say, you know, this entire session for two hours, this is about the new futures in MS Excel 365. This is nothing to do with your course or anything. This is just some of the futures what we use currently in the industry is what I'm just taking in this next two hours, say one and a half hour or one hour 45 minutes. First of all, why we're actually attending this session that is important because now if you see most of the companies are actually getting their MS Office upgraded to MS Office 365. It's there from last couple of years as well, but many of them actually have doubt what is this MS Office 365. And the versions what we have say 2010, 13 or say um, we have a 16 or 2019. So what is this? Okay, so let's understand all these differences and also we'll see what are the new things which have been added in this 365, which will help you in reduce lot of work as well as some of the macros as well. Okay, so the new features what we have in 365, that is Excel 365 has reduced your coding also to some extent. So I'll be showing you some of them where you can understand this and you can start implementing as well. It's not that very difficult, also not very complex. It's very simple. You can start working on this if you have MS Office 365 or 2009. Okay. First, let's see what are topics we have here. What are things we will be discussing? So first, we'll discuss about the difference between the versions and the 365 version. Okay. And then I'll tell you about the new functions what have been added here, that is the formulas. And then we'll talk about the new charts which have been implemented. I'm not going to teach you about the previous charts, whatever is there in uh, MS Excel. I'm just going to teach you what are new charts which are available. Then we'll be uh, seeing something called as 3D model. So all this time we had this images or shapes what we used to install. Now we have a concept of 3D models as well, where we can install 3D models with animations as well. Okay. And then we have icons. So all these days when you are uh, creating some buttons or icons in uh, uh, Excel for dashboard. So we used to go download somewhere and used to get the images and there were a lot of licensing issues and we had to pay for that. Now it's not like that. So every icons are available in Excel itself, which is more uh, clear and the resolution is also very high where we can use it for buttons as well as icons. Okay. And then next we have this uh, auto complete. This is it's there already, but uh, it's something which uh, uh, you should just know that's it. When you're writing a function, you will get some intelligence, which will help you in knowing the function. Okay, so that I'll tell you. And about changing the colors of these themes, so how you actually can do that with your own uh, customization of your uh, theme of your MS Office, you can change it. This has nothing to do with calculations or anything. It's just a settings that's all. And after that, I'll tell you about something called as smart lookup, then power query and power buttons. Though I may not go everything in detail, but the entire session is to make you guys aware that what all things are available. Okay, this will help you in understanding that the new features and start implementing as well. But I'll be telling you some of the uh, functions or power query editors, how we can do, how we can reduce the, um, the macros, the automation part and the data modeling as well. Okay, all right. First of all, let's, uh, let's understand about the difference between the version and MS Office 365. The versions what we have is 2003 version, then came 2007, then 2010, 13, then 16. Now we have 2009. These are called as standalone. Why? Because when you have any updates to be done, we have to wait for the next version. When I say I had 2003 version, if you want to get the new features for that, we have to wait for the next version that is 2007 and it goes on. But now you know that after this Android and all came, our way of uh, uh, getting the updates totally changed, right? I have a mobile. If something gets updated, automatically it will get updated. So I don't have to go and again install that, right? The same way, all these softwares are now becoming like an app where they're getting upgraded automatically. For that, this MS Office 365 is one example. So 
So what this MS Office 365 is, this is called as subscription version. Subscription means you are subscribing it. You are not getting it and installing it. And again, if you want to install the next version, you have to wait for another two or three years. This is like subscription version where we are just subscribing. We'll get the online permission where you can download online itself. You don't have to go and purchase in the shop or uh, something like a CD and all. You will just get the link, download, you can start and start. Every update will be done automatically. Okay. Now let's get back here. We can see that new features are updated only in the next version. That is, I have 2010. If you want to get new features, I have to go and install the next version. But we'll also get that in the CD. So we used to get that in CDs, or now also, if you want some versions, we'll go copy that in Pendra and then we can install it. So we need to add some uh, you know different means to install it. But now it's not like that. We are actually having the online where we can just download directly from the online that is in the Microsoft portal and we can get it installed. And every now and then we don't have to install now. MS Office 365, once you install, it is like permanent. Every now and then the updates are getting you know uploaded. So you are software will keep getting updated and you can start working on the new features. That is the advantage. 2019 version was actually was on hold actually means they didn't want to release that but there are some people who are used to this or uh, say you know standalone versions so uh, what i have read in one of the articles is next will not have any standalone versions it will be like an app where we have this 365 subscription version everyone will be installing this if you have seen almost all the companies or almost all the business you know laptops have been installed with 365 because it is very fast and new features are out. Okay, so this is the difference. All right. The next is about the new functions. I'll work on a few of them. I have the supporting file as well, which I'll be sharing it with you. You can work on that as well. There are new functions which helps us in working on so many things in a simple way. What does that mean? See, previously we had this sum if average it, count it, but we didn't have this maximum or minimum. Suppose if I have a group of data, in that I need to get some maximum value or minimum value, we didn't have that conditional statement for max and min. Now we have a max is min is. We used to write something called as nested ifs. Now we don't have to bother about nested if we have something called as if state or switch state. Okay, and now when I say text, I'm concatenating. When I'm actually combining the text, I have to go and keep on selecting each cell. Now those days are gone. You can concatenate multiple cells like what we use for the sum average. Okay, so likewise, there are so many new functions which have been added. Along with that, there is one formula which always makes people that Excel is difficult, Excel is complex, or Excel is advanced. That is we look up formula. People actually always, whenever I've seen, people think that we look up formula is something very advanced. If they learn that, they'll become like software engineers. To that level, they see that we look up. But I'll tell you, we look up is a very simple formula, but still, Excel has made this we look up formula still more simpler by using this X lookup and X match. There is a formula which is X lookup, which has made your we look up formula still more simpler. I'll show you with the example how to work on this. I'm just reading all this. Apart from all these functions, what we see, we have something called as array formulas. Previously, suppose if you want to filter something, we used to go add the filter option and filter the data. Copy that, paste it somewhere, or use advanced filters. Now, filter itself is a formula. Sort itself is a formula. I can sort it by columns or rows. Then we have, suppose if you want to get unique records, we used to go remove duplicates. Now we can get that by writing a formula also. That is left to you whether you use unique, get unique records that is remove duplicates and you can get that or you can write a formula, anything that is left to you. But options are available. Then we have the sequence where we used to uh, get the sequence of numbers 7, 2, 3, 4, 5, drag it. Now you don't have to bother. I just have to give say from 1 to 100 I need serial number automatically. We had something called as 
rand and rand, you know, the random numbers used to write, right? Rand between and rand. Now, we don't have to bother about that. We have something called as rand array, which will give me random numbers in an array with decimals, with integers or combination of. So likewise, I have so many new functions. So before going to the next topic, I'll work on these options here, which are there. That is new functions. Okay. So I'll be sharing this file with you. This has got all the functions. MS Excel new formulas. I'll work a few of them or we'll see if you have time, then I'll work on all the formulas and I'll show you. And again, people, Excel is easy. Do not think that there is something like basic, intermediate or advanced. Everything is simple okay when i say advanced it's always that unless and until you practice unless and until you explore everything looks advanced once you explore it everything will become simple okay fine so here i have few formulas which i'll be showing uh, to you which uh, i just discussed how they are actually used so i was talking about concatenate right so all these days we used to use this concatenate now let's go here say equals i'll just use this concatenate you can see that I have this concatenate. So if I'm using this concatenate, this is the formula up to 2016 what we used to use. I have to select each cell like this. And then I'll get the result like this. But I told you those days are gone. Now I have something called as concat. Concat, I just have to drag the range enter. See? Now one more question arises. I combined, but there is no space, comma, nothing. It is it's not separating anything. It's just giving me straight away all the combined, uh, say, text, which is not a proper way of combining or say concatenate. So for that, we have a formula called as text join. So what text join will do? It will concatenate with delimiters. So what are delimiters? Delimiters are nothing but a character which will separate your text. Let's see how we can do that. Say, let's zoom this equals text join. Okay, you see the first parameter. It says delimiter. I'll use comma space. Next is ignore. Ignore the empty cells or include the empty cells. I'll just say ignore the empty cells. I'll explain you this with practical what actually it is. Comma, it lasts for the text. I'll select this text. Now I'll say enter. You can see that now I'm getting with delimiter. I gave an option that is true or false. I gave a true. So when I remove some data here, you can see that the data is still getting combined, ignoring the empty cell. Suppose if you think that I want the empty cells also to be considered, then make it false. Just change this to false. See, I'll get that empty data. Understood? So to this extent, Excel has you know, become advanced. Okay, fine. If and switch. Previously, we used to write a formula, a conditional statements multiple times if you want to check multiple conditions. And we used to call it as nested if. If, inside if, again if, again if, it goes on. It actually confuses us. The main confusion is how many brackets I have to put. That was the main confusion. And how actually I should check more conditions. Right now, those days are gone. Now we have something called as ifs. What ifs will do? I'll show you. Say, I'll go here. Equals ifs. It lasts for logical test. What is the logical test? I'll say this value, if it is equals to f u r then it should be furniture i'm just selecting this right now i'll say comma this is one criteria that is one logical test if that is true then i'll get the value now the second test if this is not true it will go to the second test second logical test is if this value so I'm not giving you fear equals. I'll say OFF. Then if it is true, then I'll say it is office. I'll just select this. 
instead of typing i'm just using this cell letters okay comma if this is also false then i'll say if this value equals equals tec then it should be technology see logical test result logical test result enter and if i just copy this down double click see i'll get the okay so it's such easy now switch switch again is exactly similar to if but this one we can use it with expert a formula say for example here i have a product id the first three characters whatever product id i'll get the code i get based on that i should get this category here i don't have category but i have the product code the first three characters whatever you see in the product id that is the category code so based on that i want to get the result now what i'll do i'll go here say equals switch switch and i'll give the expression it is asking for the expression expression i'll say left of this text comma 3 is the expression i want left of d7 comma 3 whatever result i get whatever result i'm getting here based on that i should get the output right now if the result is f u r then it should be furniture comma now you see i will take another condition here say if it is o f f then i'll select this office yeah. comma if it is p e c then it is tick we just observe it's the same kind of formula what we use if but here i'm using an expression if i would have used if here i have to give that expression three times left of d7 comma 3 equals f u r then furniture again comma if it is um, you know the left of the value comma 3 equals so i have to check multiple times here i'm not checking multiple times i'm just taking one expression whatever results i'm getting based on that i should get the output see right. i've taken the same example here so that you can relate when to use if when to use which both give me same results but usually switch is used when you have some expression so that it'll be easy for us to check the condition and get the result right okay so these are some of the functions let's see how we can use this uh, x lookup as well so let me take this one value i'll just show you how this x lookup we can work because i don't have the example here i'll take one value here x lookup before going to x lookup let me just explain about v lookup everyone knows what is v lookup now v lookup means vertical lookup what it will do is it will look for the value vertically and then it will give you the results everyone knows but what if the lookup value is not in the first column we know that we look up when you are actually trying to get the value the lookup column should be in the first column of the table array what if it is not there then again you have to arrange that you have to move that column whichever is there in the end the middle anywhere put it in the first column or you have to use index function but x lookup you don't have to bother let the column be anywhere equals x lookup Things are very simple here. It is asking for lookup value. Same thing like what we have in V lookup. I'll just select this. Okay. Just select this. If you want to fix that, you can just fix it. Comma. Lookup array. Now the lookup array means you're not going to select the entire table. You just have to select here this one. Just the column where my lookup value is available. Just one column. Comma return array return array is on which column i should get the result now i can take either region here or row id or sales or country code anything you can do you don't have to bother 
whether it should it's in the first column, should be in the previous column or after that column. Let's say I want to get the sales value. I'll select here like this. Come on. If not found, in VLOOKUP, you don't have this option. If it is not found, we get that not available error. Any error, right? But here, I'll say if not found, I'll say zero. If you think that you want to make it some text, say not found or something, you can give that. I'm just giving one simple zero here, comma, match mode. You know that exact match, approximate match. I'll use the exact match, comma. Now, this is one unique thing here, search mode. What is search mode? We look up, we'll search from top to bottom. But X look up has got an option of searching from bottom to top as well. Either from top to bottom or bottom. You can see that search first to last, last to first. If you think that there are multiple values, duplicate values, then you can use this. Whether I should search the value from bottom to top or top to bottom, say first to last or last to first. I'll use first to last only and I'll say enter. You can see that I'm getting that is zero. Let me just copy this and I'll put it here. You can see that I'm getting this result. This is X lookup. Now you don't have to bother about V lookup. That is first column. The lookup value should be there. I have to arrange that moving the column from last column to first column or middle column to first column. Don't bother at all. Directly, directly go to X lookup. Okay, good. Next, next the formulas what we have is the array formulas. Since they are a little, you know, new, I'm not telling it's complex. So what I've done is I've given all the possible uh, examples here. I'll show you one of them. So if you think that you want to work, you can use this and you can work after I send this files to you. So what I've done here, I've given all the combination of all, uh, you know, the way what uh, you, you can use uh, the filter formulas. Okay. All right. Now let's go here. I'll say filter. I want to filter some data equals filter it's very easy i think the filter it lasts for the array when i say array see here i have this array from which array you want the data i can just select that comma and then it lasts for next array that is which array i need to filter which column i need to filter let me select this column C and I'll say equals, let's say I want to filter East. Okay. If empty, that means if there are no data, while filtering, if there are no data, then make it zero. I'll show you both. See, now the data is filtered based on this east like this. this is array i gave formula only for the first cell and the data whatever we are getting that is in the entire right okay now you just observe if i give something which is not available that's what i was telling it's zero if you are not specifying this zero i'll get this new error calculation error this was not this error was not there now you get this error when you say calculation error that means you're trying to filter some data and that is not available and you are not given that error value that is if not found value okay so always try to specify this comma zero and here the parameter says it is optional because it's in square bracket so make sure that you give the zero if you have doubt that data is not available okay fine sort for sort also we have a formula sort can be done row wise or column wise okay let's see i have the data here let's say equals sort and i will select from here to here comma Now it lasts for sort index. What is sort index? Sort index is nothing but which column I need to sort. 
column one, two, three, four. We have four columns. So suppose if you think that I want to sort the fourth column, I'll say four. That is sales column. Comma. Ascending or descending one. Ascending is one. Descending is minus one. Okay. I'll say one. Or we'll take it as descending because it's a number. Comma. Now here we have the sort by column by row. By row means top to bottom. Column means column wise. That is left to right. Now we'll say by row, or you can use it zero and say enter. See, the data is getting sorted here. Okay, it is sorted. You give column three. Just have to change this column three. Enter. See, if I say one. Here I'll say one. At any mark. Once or twice, if you work, these formulas becomes very easy, very simple. And these are used nowadays. You know, most of the people are using this because it's very simple to later you can copy this and paste it anywhere as values. Right. So sort by columns. This is exactly the same thing what we did there, but here we gave it as you know this one as false that is sort by column then we are making it true so that this will be sorting by columns i'll just show you that also one example let's go here say i want to sort this equals sort then we'll select the array selecting this array this is column wise now okay comma sort index now to give the row index number whether it is first row or second row let's say i want to sort it by first row that is the Customer name, comma, sort order, let's say ascending, and now it lasts for by column, by row. I'll say by column. Make it true. Close bracket. <coughs> See, we can sort it by column as well. Okay, fine. This is by column index what we sorted. Now we have one more sort option that is sort by here you don't have to give any index number you just have to specify the column which are sorted right how is that let's say equals sort by it says sort a range or array based on the values in the corresponding range or array that means we are not giving index number here we are giving the column uh, the column selection here sort by it lasts for array let me select this array comma then here it lasts for which is the first array let's say i want to sort it by this one region let's sort it by region see i'm selecting this understood so i selected the range now i didn't select the index number previously i gave one two three four whatever i'm selecting the range itself the advantage here is we can sort it with multiple columns as well. So previously we couldn't do because only one column if you want to sort, you can go for sort. Now I'm saying sort by first I can give region. If you think I want to give one more column, I can select here. That is array two. Now what I'll do is I'll say comma. I'll give it as ascending or descending order. I'll say ascending order. Close bracket, say enter. You can see that it get sorted depending on the column what is specified. Let's say I'll go here. I will just change this to this one and say minus one see this column is getting signed. this is sort by okay right next one is unique we all know that unique means i can remove duplicates and i can get the unique records but here there is one more advantage what is that say when i have a data when it's a unique record even if there are duplicates it will give me only one value from that duplicate. That means all the the, the entire range it will pick only one value, whether it is multiple values or single value. But here I also have an option of selecting only those data which are appearing only once. There is difference between picking the unique values and picking the values which are appearing only once. If you see here, this person Rita is available twice. That means if I take the unique value only, the Rita will appear only once. But if I say 
uh, I mean a unique value. But if you want to fetch the person name or the customer name or appearing only once, then I can use this appearing only once. Where this can be used, say for example, there are some customers who frequently visit us, right? We can, uh, you know, we know that these people will be keep coming. Or sometimes what will happen? The customers, there are, uh, they come only once. That's all. They didn't appear at all. These kind of things are actually, you know, they do analysis and they start uh, uh, doing the marketing for people who come only once because they want, they don't want to lose the customers, right? So if you want to do these kind of analysis, then you can use this formula. How? Let me show you. Unique. It lasts for array. Select only one column. If you're selecting both, it will still work, but it will work with the combination. Exactly like remove duplicates. Okay. Now I'm just selecting this and then say comma. Now here again, I can use this by column by row. If I have by column, then it will take by column. If it is by row, it will take by row. I'll say zero or one. Anything you can use. I'm using this false comma. It lasts for exactly once. Now if you see this return items that appear exactly once return every distinct item when i say distinct item see here can you see that this person rita the customer rita is appearing even though her name is repeating twice this is unique value a distinct value now let's go here appearing only once same formula unique then i'll say array a comma by rows comma now i will select return items that appear exactly once so can you see that only three names appear. that means these customers have purchased in my store only once now i have to call them people who are coming frequently we don't actually care because we know that they will keep coming right so if you want to get some data like that then you can use this formula and this is by column, same thing, just by column, quickly we'll do this as well, equals unique. Then I'll say array, select this, comma. Then I have this unique columns. This is by columns, sorry. Then again, this is same thing, distinct or appearing only once, close bracket. Let me just copy the same formula again instead of typing i'll just paste it here only thing you have to change is this one up here exactly same table i just uh, you know transpose that's sequence sequence is actually uh you know something very interesting where uh, we used to have a serial number one two and again drag it for the numbers now you don't have to do all those things there are very simple ways to do Let's say equals sequence. Now it lasts for rows. I'll say 10 rows, comma. It lasts for number of columns. Let me say only one. See, one to 10. Automatically I'll get one to 10. I don't have to keep dragging. If you say 100, it'll go to 100 as well, comma. The advantage is I can also give the starting number. Let's say I want to start this from 101. And one more advantage is I can specify how many numbers I have to skip. I'll go here and say step, I'll say two. See? Odd numbers. Okay? This is sequence. Now I'll go here. I'll change this column to five. Just see. I'll get the array of sequences. Understood. So we can do something like this as well. Rand array. This is now the more used uh, formula for generating random numbers. Previously used to use rand for decimal numbers. Then rand between for the whole number from one point to another point. That is top to bottom. But now we can create an array. It's like what we saw the sequence. Same thing, but here it will generate random say equals rand array it lasts for rows and columns let's say i want 10 rows five columns 
I'll just say enter. I'll not specify anything. See, I got random numbers, ten rows, five columns with decimal number. Now, if you want, minimum value, maximum value. Same thing like what we have this rand between. I'll say one, two hundred. See, whole number with the decimal number. This is like a exact number from one to hundred, whatever you specify. If you want only integer, that is the whole number, then we'll go here. We'll say. See, understood. So these are some of the new functions which have been added in Excel 365. Maybe some of you would have already started using, but uh, start using it. Why? Because there are so many advantages of it. Once you start using it, then it will become very uh, you know, easy to work on this. Many of them have started using this Excel lookup. The Excel lookup came very long back. People started using it. Now people are slowly forgetting this V lookup, but still some people who are starting their Excel to work. So you know they they learn Excel from beginning or they are working now. They use this V lookup, but I'm not telling that don't use V lookup. You can use it, but still we have this X lookup now. If you feel that if you have this 365 in your system, start using X lookup. Okay, all right. Let me close this. So this file I'll be sharing it with you. You can work okay let's see what is there next new charts you have seen so many different charts when i say charts when i ask questions what are charts you know the people in first thing they say sir i know column chart. sir i know bar chart i know line chart or pie chart these are the charts what always people will use if i give one data create a dashboard first thing they do is they'll say one column chart everywhere only column chart or if they put pie chart, only pie chart. The problem is people will not think that when to use this pie chart, when to use this column chart, or when to use line chart. There are so many different ways of representing your data. That is why Power BI is becoming very, very popular. So, okay. Apart from this, in Excel also now, we have various different charts. Are being so, okay, let me show you a few of them. I'm not going to teach you the basic uh, charts. I'm just showing you what all uh, you know the new charts which are available. We have something called as Sunburst. What is the Sunburst? I'll show you. Let's open charts. We know pie chart. We know donut chart. Right? We have worked on them. Let me just go here. Select and here I'll say insert. Here we have this pie chart or donut chart. Anything we can take. Let's take pie chart only. You can see that I'm getting some data here. Uh, say one chart here. Like this. this is the old way of showing my data. If you just observe this, this is based on the state. I want to differentiate it. How I want by state by region as well. Let's see if I can create a pie chart. Let me just select this. And I'll say pie chart. Not coming. Right? Still, I'm getting similar kind of results like what I got here. But now we have a chart called a sunburst. What the sunburst will do? It will show me the region wise, the state wise, the pie chart or donut chart. Okay, let's see. I selected here. I'll go to this insert, and here I have this tree map. Here you can see that sunburst. This is again not a very advanced thing. What we are doing, just the data has to be arranged. That's all. You see here. I just click on this. I got this sunburst chart. You can see. I have this state. I have this region. So in that region, the state have been differentiated, but the data has to be like this. What I have mentioned there, here the you know the charts whatever we create or you know the visualizations what we represent, uh, the biggest challenge is about arranging of the data. That is why Power BI is becoming more popular uh, because there you don't have to go and arrange the data. I just have to drag and drop. 
the chart is there. Okay, in the back end, it will uh, you know, do calculations and things like that. But in Excel, we have to arrange the data. Okay, fine. Tree map. Just now we saw this pie chart or the, the, the sunburst chart, which was like a donut chart. In that, we had two dimensions that is, one is region, other one is state. We can do the same thing, something called a tree map, which will be like a column chart or stacked chart. Right now, if you go here, if I click a column chart, say a column chart, you can see that I'm getting this column chart like this. Or let's select this and I'll create one stacked chart. I'll go here, insert, and I'll say stack chart. Wherein I'm still getting the state, but here I'm seeing that central, east, south, and west. It is just differentiating by the labels, not with the visualization. Right now, let me delete this. We have something called as tree map now. What is tree? Tree is something, tree, and we have branches in that. Similar way, we can plot the chart. Let's select this. Go to this insert. Here I have this tree map. It is exactly like what we have this sunburst. This is square. That is like a pipe. This is like the, uh, what is it, stack chart, what we have, similar to that. Let me just click on this. See here. Okay, you can see that there is the region, say south, central, east, and west with different colors. Inside that, I have state, which is differentiated exactly like what we saw in the previous chart. Right. Next one, waterfall chart. Waterfall chart we used to create in the previous versions, but what was happening is we had to arrange the data. Waterfall chart is nothing but it is a chart which will keep track of the cumulative values. Say month one, I have 100 rupees. Month two, I'll have 200 rupees. So totally, I have earned 300 rupees. Right? In month two. I want to show it such a way that, you know, suppose if I show that in a column chart, it will be like 100 and 200 and it goes on. I don't want like that. I want to show the total as well. So in that case, 100 plus 200, I want to show 300. But the second month, the visually it should be like 200 only, but the total has to be shown as 300. Though it is a little confusing when I explain, I'll show you how actually the waterfall chart looks. That makes you understand that what actually is a waterfall chart and how actually it looks. Right? If you see here, I have some value. In few places, there are some negative values. Negative means it is going down. Right? Say month one, I have 100 rupees. Month two, I have uh, 200 rupees. That means I have totally 300 rupees. In month three, I spent 100 rupees. That means it will go in minus. So 300 minus 100, it will become 200. That means in month three, I have only 200 rupees. So likewise, I need to know the flow, how it flows. Profit, loss, how it is going. What I'll do, select and here I'll say insert and We'll go to this waterfall chart just click on this see so what i was telling is this one say in month jan 448 units i have the next month i have 1831 that means it is going up this means that it is giving me the total of both the values january and february but it is showing me it is representing only the february value but it's going up to show me that the total year. It is going here, and if you see in July, I have this minus 1997. That means it is going down because it is in minus. Let's see what is the total. If you see here, total is 6499. So it is coming down because it's negative value. Now it goes on like this. And again, in November, you have 1404. Again, it is negative. And goes. So likewise, you will get the cumulative values with the flow, that is waterfall chart. Now it is very simple, just you have to give the data, your chart is ready. Otherwise, we have to create the starting value, then cumulative value, then again minus that. So, so many things were there. Now you don't have to bother. So, okay, fine. Funnel chart. Funnel chart is exactly like a bar chart. 
but the thing is they are arranged in center so that it looks like a funnel like the smaller value and it's going with the bigger value nowadays uh, you would have heard about the funnels the click funnels so many things are there that is like you know the value from lower to higher value what you're showing for this if you are sorting it it's good you should sort the data then only you'll get the right funnel chart let me just select this go to this insert and here i have this funnel see like this the funnel chart okay all right the charts depends on you how you want to represent it that's all there is no room that you have to use waterfall chart line chart bar chart pie chart no the chart will actually easily explain the data what you're trying to represent that's all you have to keep in mind okay fine map before going to this map let me finish this histogram and then i'll come to this map. okay histogram histogram means it is like grouping of some values i have some names here with age i want to group the age what is a grouping i want to group the age say from 0 to 10 how many uh, employees are there patients are there students are there whatever then from 11 to 20 how many are there from 21 to 30 how many are there i'm categorizing if you want to do this previously what we used to do we used to take the value say from 0 to 10 we should mark here in which range it falls then again count that then create the chart but now it's not like that we are just having the data select the back and automatically calculate and give me this chart which we call it as histogram chart here just click on this you can see that it's getting grouped like this so depending on the grouped values it will give me the result chart. Okay, histogram map now in excel we can plot maps like what we do in tableau power bi click you or any other business intelligence tools as well. let's see how we can actually create make sure that the data what you have here for creating the map the location should be proper if it is not proper you don't plot because it has to understand the maps the locations okay all right let me just select this and then we'll go to this insert here i have this maps just you have to click on this map again there is nothing like very advanced thing always you have to make sure that your data is proper if data is proper data is arranged properly charts is just simple select and create the chart that's all see this is how i can get the map here modifications and changes you can do a lot many things are there in this but just to show you what features we have i'm just showing you this okay so these are the maps what we have. I mean sorry the charts what we have in new msx and this is the new charts which have been introduced or say implemented or available okay fine we close this the next what do we have let me just see okay so apart from this i also have few things that is power query editors which is there from 2016 only it's not that uh, it's only on 365 it's there to 2016 also and data modeling that is power fibers let's see what it is first we'll see power query there was one uh, power bi session morning so most of them are already uh, are aware of it and people who are there so it is exactly like what we did in uh, what we have in power bi same thing we have in excel as well now previously we didn't have this option now in 2016 and above version or 365 we have this power query <coughs> option as well so you would have heard you know the many of them have heard about this power queries uh, but some people actually think that it's very advanced or uh, it might be like uh, or something very complex i'll tell you this power query has made life more easier for people who don't like formulas when i write a formula then i have to you know see a lot of things the formulas and things like that 
But now, without formulas, I can get a lot of things done. Let me show you some of them. And also, I'll tell you how you can reduce the macros. That is, the VBA programs, what we write on Excel to uh, append the data. So, those things also can be reduced. Right? Let's see how this Power Query Editor helps us in reducing the formulas. Right? Okay. So, I'll just open one Excel. I'll open an Excel file. Right. Here we have this data. And here I have this get and transform data. So this one section, whatever is there, this is available completely in Power BI as well. When I say transform data, if you want to transform data, I need to create a connection or I need to import the data. Right. Now if you go here, here it says get data. When I say get data, it's not that only the Excel data, we can connect to various different data sources. Now, what is data source? Data source is nothing but the data from where we're actually pulling, the tool or the software from where we are pulling the data. Then what are those? The database like SQL Server, MySQL, Oracle, or MS Access itself. We can pull data from those kind of sources. Excel, CSV file, PDFs, we can get the data from these kind of sources. Cloud, Azure, we can get the data from there. Now we can connect to any data source, get the data and start working on it. To that extent, Excel has grown. Excel is that advanced now. Let's see, if you go here, you can see that there are so many options, Excel, CSV, XML, and so many other things. If you go to this database, we have this SQL Server, MS Access, then SSIS, things like the Oracle, then MySQL, SAP, HANA as well. And this is for the cloud where people work on Azure, okay? <coughs> then we have this online services. Multiple sources we can get the data. <coughs> we can also get the data. Suppose you already have a data. I'll convert that into table and then I can get the data as well. Okay, fine. But one thing is clear. Let the data be from any data source. Once it is coming to the Excel file, we can work in a similar way. No matter whichever data source it is. Whether it is SQL Server or it is MySQL or Access or Excel. Anything. Once it is coming into Excel, that means we can work exactly similar with all the other data. Let me just take one workbook. I just trying to take one workbook. So people who are already aware of Power BI, Power Query Editor, this will be very simple for them. But let me just take one example. Let's say I'll take this. One Excel file where I need to format the text. Let's say import. When I say import, the data is connected and it is imported. So when I copy, when I take the data, like copy and paste, it is Excel to Excel. I just copy and paste. That's all data. But here I'm creating a connection itself. Now if, it, if you see this, it says from text column is a file name. I'm selecting it. You can see that the data which I'm using it for Power Query Editor. I just selected here. I'll say load, load to and transform. Load will load the data to Excel sheet. When we use this Power Query editor, that is the question. Okay. If you think that I want to transform the data, transform means I want to modify the data, then I have to use this Power Query editor. Power Query editor, you can open that by taking the data into Excel and then you can go to Power Query Editor or directly you can go to Power Query Editor as well. Let's see first, we'll load this to Excel sheet. That is, I'll say load to, it'll ask, I'll say table and say okay. So it is connecting and it is taking the data, creating table, you can see that I got the data. I need to modify some modifications. 
some simple modifications let's do i will take this to power query editor say data get data here i have this launch power query editor just click on that it will take me to power query editor see that data which we just took that is available now here assume that i want to clean the data i need to modify the data i don't have to go in excel now see i have some data here i want to clean this i have a formula called as clean equals clean and then i'll clean i don't have to do that see here i'll go to this home tab or say go to this transform here i'll have something called as clean transform clean over i didn't use formula here i have extra spaces i use print for removing extra spaces let's go here i will say format trim done okay assume that i want a separate column of this customer name with capital letters so i'll use equals upper case and then in the results we we'll go here we can say add column either you can say transform or add column anything is fine i'll say upper case see okay fine now if you see here i have this product type i want to split this i want this category and you know some ids i just want to split this data into three different columns depending on the hyphens i'll go here i'll say split there are so many options to split use the split by delimiter and here it last for the delimiters the delimiter is hyphen say okay see it got split if i want to do the same thing in excel take that text to columns break it into different columns again put it back nothing to worry now now let me close this close and load that's all now you just see in excel all the modifications is applied done so i don't have to bother about modifying anything say by using the formulas everything is readily available now right anything you can do here lot many things you can do i'll show you one more thing i have a table or say i have some tables in one excel sheet i have three different sheets i want to append the data what is append append means one below the other if you want to do that you have to do manually or you have to write macros now that is gone you don't have to write any macros combine queries i'll say append so for this we need to get the tables here i don't have tables we can import the table first let me just import the table i'll import the table first let's say i have one file called as append query and again people same thing is available in power bi also same exactly same the power query editor has been replicated in excel exactly like what we have in power bi okay so people who learn this power query editor in excel they feel it very easy to work in power bi or people who work in power bi with query editor they will get comfortable in working with excel as well okay right let me just select these three there are three tables i selected and i'll say load i'm showing this in excel only so that you will get more used to it i selected these three tables say okay <coughs> now what i imported is within the table yeah, sorry within the workbook itself not from other workbook will take some time all right you can see that i imported table 1 table 2 and table 3 three. three tables i imported now my intention is all these data whatever is there in three different tables has to be appended one below the other i told you one way is manual otherwise i'll write the macros 
But imagine there are 50, 60 sheets like this. It will take a lot of time, right? So what we'll do, now we'll go here, data, get data, combine, append. But this should be available in Excel as a data, that is as a table, or we have to create a connection step, okay? So I can see that I have two tables or three tables. I just select these three tables. I just remove this, say table one, table two, table three. I took three tables. I will say, okay. Now it will go to Power Query Editor because anything will happen. It will go to Editor. Now it is trying to combine. So you can directly do it here also. Why I showed in Excel is because you should be aware in Excel. Because if you are learning everything here in Power Query Editor, it will be difficult for you to understand. See? Can you see that? Not appended here. Now I will close this. Close and load. Same close. See, all the three tables have been happened. One below the other. This is one way what we can reduce the automation that is uh, macros. There is one more major thing. What is that? Let me just close this file so that we'll have a new file. We saw how to append in one single file with multiple tables. That is multiple sheets. I took, I appended. What if the data is in multiple workbooks? I'm talking about the workbooks. Now it is only one workbook, three Excel sheets. But I have multiple workbooks. Then how can I combine? Let's go here to this data. I'll show you the folder here. You can see that I have a folder here with multiple files with same data structure. Okay, let me just remove this and I'll put it here. I'll just put it somewhere for time being. <clears throat> so, in this folder, how many files I have? I have eight files. Okay, I need to append all the data from all these eight files. Data, get data this time. I'll say from folder. I'll not select any file. I'll say from folder. Open. Now here, what it will do is, it will give me the file list, the details about the files which is available in the folder. Let it be any files, it will just give me the list. If you think that I want to get all the list of file names, you can use only this. But if you're trying to append that, combine that, then now I can see there is one more new option called as combine. Previously it was not there. Now I'm getting this combine. I'll go here and I'll say combine and load to. If I say combine and load to, it will combine the data and put it in the Excel sheet. If you want to modify something, then you can go to Power Query Edit. Now let's say I'll go here say combine and load to to get the data into excel here I have this combine and transform that will take me to power query editor here i'll say excel i'll say combine and load so this will give me the data from all the files combined one below the other let's see let me select this first sheet this is for a sample this is checking i'll say okay So, no macros, nothing. It got appended. Now, one more question arises. What if I add more files? Because these kind of projects or these kind of process, what you're doing, it is not that only static files will be there, only eight files, ten files. I'll be keep adding the files there. Say for example, I'm working on some weekly report or say daily report. So weekly reports, what will happen is say today I get some files, I'll put it in that folder. And tomorrow again I'll get it. So for one week, I'll be getting 
many files, right? So if you want to update that, so I don't have to again do the process. I just have to go here, just go here and take those files. Let's say I'll take these files, but make sure that they are similar, okay? I'll paste it here. Now assume that the next day I got eight more files. Let's go back here. I don't have to do anything. Just click on this refresh. Before that, we'll just check. See here it says 88 rows, right? Now let me go here and I'll say refresh. 176. Right? No macros, nothing. If I write macros, again it will run. Somewhere you have problem, and again it'll say debug error, and you have to break one. But not everything can be done with Power Query editor. So whatever possible things, you know, there are some places where you can reduce the coding now. And we can do things much faster. Okay. This is Power Query Editor. There are a lot many things in Power Query Editor. I'm just showing you some examples what uh, we have in our 365, which can be implemented in our daily process who uses Excel for report. Okay, fine. Next is we have something called as power pivots. When I say power pivots, people think that there is something power in pivot or say something very advanced. There is nothing like that. It's just that more options are available. Pivot table means pivot table only. There is nothing like it has got more power in that. It's just, just that how the data is actually coming. Usually pivot table, what we used to do, 2013 and below version, we used to have one sheet. In that, we used to create the pivot. Then after 2013, we started getting all these power pivots, data modeling things and all, which helped us to create pivot table from multiple sheets, multiple sheets under. The next, it became such a way that we could connect to various data sources, like what we did for Power Query Editor, we saw that we can connect to any servers and all, then we can create the pivot table. Why it is called as Power Pivots, I'll tell you. Usually, in Excel, we can have 10 lakh 48,576, the exact number I'm telling, or let's say 10 lakh records maximum. What if I have records 20 lakhs, 30 lakhs, and I need to create the reports? You cannot create. For that, we have something called as data model, which this power query, uh, sorry, this power pivot uses. I have an SQL server where I have 20 lakh records. I need to pull the data and create the report. How to do? I cannot copy and paste the data here in Excel. So there is a concept called as data model where we just connect the all. The data is not taken to Excel, only the connection will be there. But I can create pivot table using that connection. Let me show you what I was trying to tell you. <clears throat> Let me just take one Excel file itself. I'm just taking Excel file itself. Let me check. I have a right data. So okay. you can see that I have different sheets, different data. Okay, I'll take this itself for using this uh, power words. Let's go back. Copy this. I'll go to this data. Here I have something called as managed data model. Now it is there in all the uh, Excel from 2016 and above. Even in 13 also, it might be available. But 2016 and above, you will get this. But 365, this will be available. Or you can go to this Power Pivot. Here I have this Manage. Okay. In this Manage, that is data model. Both are same. You can either go from there or you can have this Power Pivot. If I click on this. This will take me to another editor exactly like Power Query Editor. This is a separate window. You can see that. Here also we have the connections. See, I'll go here from database, from data services, from other sources, anywhere you can connect. You can see that I have this SQL Server, Azure, you know, many options are there. I will click on this. Say next, and here I have this 
Excel file where I can browse and I'll try to connect it. Say open use first row as headers. I want the first row to be as headers and then I'll say next. It will give me the list of tables I have. I can select the tables here. Let me just select few of them. I'm just selecting few. And say finish. Now, no matter you have data, any number, it will just connect. It is not importing into Excel sheet. I'll show you. Say close. You can see that the data is imported. I say close. The data is there now. This is not in Excel. Let me close this. If you see here in my Excel sheet, I don't have any data. I cannot see any data here. But still, I can create pivot table. Go to insert and say pivot table. You can see that it says use this workbooks data model. I select this existing worksheet and say okay. So you can see that the data, whatever I imported, I will get. This is why it is called as power pivots. Pivot table is same, whatever I create, same thing. I am creating here pivot table, drawing and drop everything. But the data, what I am getting, the data source where I am connecting and getting the data, that is called as power pivots. There are so many things in this. Let me show you. Now, I will go to this <clears throat> location. These are on different, different sheets now, right? Let's go here. I'll say region. Simple pivot table will create. I'll just zoom this. This is from location table. Now let's go to this data and I'll pull this data from sales and I'll put it here. See, the result is not correct. It is giving me the overall total. Why? Because the data, the tables, whatever we have, it has to be connected, it has to be joined, it has to have some relationship. I will go and I'll click on this auto detect, just observe. It's trying to detect. It's done. Close. You can see that. Now I'm getting the summarized. This is one way of connecting. Now, if I say auto detect got connected, now you people will be thinking that let me do the same thing for everything. Don't do that. Learn how it is connected. This is one way of connecting. That is, you don't have to bother. Automatically, it will connect. But how is this connection happening? There are various different ways it will happen. Let me show you. Let's go to this data model again. Okay, here I have all the tables. I'll click on this diagram view here in this window. You can see all the tables here. See, I have all the tables which are imported. Here I have this location ID which is connected. Now I want to connect the customer and I will put it here in customer ID. I'll just over here, customer ID, and I'll put it here in customer. This is how we can connect. This is manually I'm connecting in data model. Something like SQL, what we do. Okay, SQL, we have these joints. So I just connected it from customer table to this data table. Now let me go back. Here, I will remove this region and I'll take the customer name. See, I'm getting this summarized. Reports. That means it is connected. I am getting the right results. Otherwise, here also I would have got that total. Let me remove this. Let me take one more table which is not connected. You can also see. You can also see here the tables here. There are some lines. Previously, every table had got that lines. As and when I connect, the lines will get removed. It will group to one place. These two are not connected yet. Not related. So it is outside. Let me create a pivot table. Here I'll say segment. I'll just drag this segment and I'll put it here. You can see that this table is not connected. And again, I'm getting this total value. Now there is one more way of connecting. Let's go to this pivot table analyze. You have this relationship. Here I have this new auto detect. We saw 
that is very simple one but i don't want you guys to just click on that and forget it's getting connected i want you guys to know how they are actually connected now if you go here i have this table connect this table and here i'm connecting what this segment id here i have this segment table and segment id i'll say okay see let's go back to the data model see here the segment which is not connected is connected all our things are related okay apart from this we can write some functions here which is called as dax function dax is data analysis expressions which is available in power bi as well how to write this dax functions i'll go to this data view i'll just show you a few of them i'll go to this data here uh, we'll go to this customer say for example i want to convert this into upper case so in power query editor what we did we just went to that option upper case got converted if you want to do this in data model you have to write a formula say equals upper and then i'll select this one or i can say customer like this see this is also called as calculated field now let's go back to this data here i'll say equals profit divided by sales i'm getting one results here i'll convert this into percentage and i'll name it as profit percentage okay let's convert this into percentage you have the data type i'll say percentage right i can do like this as well which i can calculate the values now the same calculated field i can use it in pivot table let's go back here what i'll do i'll just take this state i'll remove this so that we'll have more data and here let me just pull this profit just taking this profit and then i'll take this profit percentage as well just observe this the value what i'm getting here i'm getting sum of profit with sum of sales and i'm getting this sum of profit percentage which is actually not right the result should be this profit divided by sales that is sum of profit let's see what results will get this value divided by this value let's convert this into percentage it should be 29.66 this is the right percentage but what's happening here in this column not telling that the calculation is wrong i mean the value what i'm getting is wrong but here it is adding up all the values you go to data modeling it is adding all the values in that row and it's giving me the results that's why it is coming as 1822 that is 2022 percentage where it was supposed to be 29.66 percentage okay how to do this i want to get this results what i'll do we'll go here to this data model here we have some space i should write the formula here not in the column there are two ways where i can write the formula one is in the calculated field here i have to write this is called as measure either i can write here or if you are confused if you think that you you know you are not able to write here or you are confused writing there we'll go here we 
in this power pivot we have measure i'll say new measure i'll go to this measure i'll get one window where i can write the formula here i'll say i'll write the formula in this data table which is measure one i'll say profit percentage measure and here i'll write the formula instead of directly taking that as profit i'll say sum of profit that is sum of profit divided by sum of sales close bracket so now what it is doing it is taking the aggregate values and then it is doing the calculation now i'll take this as number and i'll convert this into percentage say okay right can you see that now i'm getting this 29 points this is called as measure so let's get back to the data model see i told you you can write the formula here also here you can see i'm getting this measure the formula same thing here you can see sum of profit divided by sum of sales right so okay, what is the advantage of it i'll tell you here i have this profit percentage measure i have something called as kpis key performance indicators usually for dashboards we use this kpis i'll select this new kpi i'll try to create one kpi for this measure what i've created here i'll say ab absolute value i'll give it as 0.3 that is i want the target to be 30 percent whatever value i'm getting here the target value is 30 percent if any value is 30 percent and above i should get this green color okay now i just drag this and i'll put it here from 10 percent to 20 percent i want that to be yellow color anything less than 10 percent it should be red color anything greater than 30 percent should be green color. this is my indicator like what you have this condition format let me say okay when i say okay you can see that i'm getting i'll just remove this okay you can see that i'm getting one column here. so what is this column i'll tell you. let me just take this column fields here you can see that i'm getting this measure this kpis i'll click on this i'll get something called a status just remove the status again check that you can see that i'm getting this indicators depending on the kpis what i've given there. You can see 29 percent is yellow color but anything above 30 percent green color wherever you see 30 percent and above you can see that it's green color anything less than 10 percent is red color now let's test for other things as well i'll go here let me just remove this date and let's take customer see let it be any column depending on the columns i'll get this calculations done and depending on the values I'm getting, this KPI is the indicator is also good. Likewise, there are so many new functions, new features in MS Office 365, that is MS Excel 365. Okay, fine. So as you all know that the new features will actually reduce our work. So now we have changed our complete syllabus. So, so many, you know, all this is whatever we used to do this Excel and things like that. Now, along with that, we have changed our syllabus to something more, not only in our uh, Excel, in our advanced Excel Pro Plus as well. I'll show you the syllabus. You'll get an idea that what all things are available now in Excel. Okay. So, let me just show you. So, the advanced Excel, what we had previously, we had not many things, but now we have added more things. See here, these things are very common. That is introduction, spreadsheets, list. These are actually common. Now, what we have done is we have given new examples with the functions and formulas. Already we have started implementing it with the existing batch. And here you can see we are introducing one more thing that is for the dashboard that is name range, which is dynamic and static. This is a new thing what we have introduced in our advanced Excel class. Then again, the formatting things we are trying to make it more strong because uh, there are so many dashboards which people are actually creating now what's happening is people are moving to power bi and people who are still in excel uh, 
the companies are actually expecting them to have similar kind of uh, reports. So for that, what we're trying to do is we are trying to use more of these uh, formatting techniques in advanced Excel itself. And again, this data tools, we are trying to use more, uh, you know, data tools here. That is by using flash fill or, you know, we already, you know, uh, uh, the things are available, but we are giving more examples here. Okay. And then we are trying to use this hyperlink. So whatever is possible for the dashboards or templates or, you know, something related to business intelligence, we are trying to implement in our advanced Excel sessions now. So here you can see tables. Now we are introducing this relationship as well. Just now we saw this relationship, right? So those things we are trying to introduce here in the advanced Excel classes. Then we have this protecting sheets and these were the common ones. The advanced Excel now it has become like, you know, more uh, topics here. Along with that, we also have this pro plus, but here the pro plus, the total syllabus uh, we have uh, changed. If you say this, we have this filters, advanced filters. This is a different course where we'll be having 365 plus the advanced uh, techniques of using this 365. Okay. Then we have this number formatting where we have this uh, placeholders and things like that. There are so many uh, unique options which uh, many people would have not explored. So those things we are actually trying to put it. Then we have this condition formatting. Just now we saw this, uh, um, what is that KPIs, right? So likewise, we are actually trying to give more advanced features of uh, condition formatting because uh, there are so many scorecards, there are so many KPI dashboards which are coming up where people have to work on that. So this is something new topic which we are actually you know implementing. Then functions, we just saw that. So those functions are available in our advanced section professional plus uh, uh, course. So all the formulas are there here. And then power query editors. So whatever I showed was just simple say a few things only in this we have so many things which we can modify the data and get it into our excel for working on the reports and then we have this power pivots just now we saw this data modeling and then we saw this few of the data functions here are the dax functions here we have so many things actually measures then kpis okay so like that then we have this form controls we are trying to use this form controls to uh, control your Excel with charts, dynamic charts. There are so many dynamic charts what you can create with the user form controls. So those things we have implemented in the advanced Excel Pro Plus. And here we have this advanced charts, what we just saw. That is a new charts which are available in 365. But we also have some dynamic charts and more other different uh, charts actually. Here like dynamic butterfly charts, Gantt charts, condition formatting charts, interactive charts, okay. So now things have changed totally. Like uh, say before COVID, the usage of Excel was something different. Now everything wants to be online or something almost close to business intelligence tools is what uh, the companies are expecting. So we are also trying to change the syllabus according to that um, uh, say requirements because we keep speaking to the companies or companies will approach us for some requirements while working on the projects. So depending on that, we are actually changing the syllabus. And this is like a unique syllabus what uh, we did. And I think uh, most of the batches we have already started, though we have not uh, 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 prepared any documents directly, but still, we know the topics, we are just trying to do it. Simultaneously, we are preparing the documents as well. But this will be done uh, with the PDFs, then example files and everything will be there available, okay? And you also know that we have our own app as well. Okay, so now this app, why I'm actually showing this is most of the people wants to learn a lot many things. Every day I'm actually having one tips here. So we have daily tips. So we have already started this. Though this were already published in our YouTube, but uh, we are trying to make more videos on the completely advanced things. And uh, we are launching our uh, course as well. If you see this, just now I showed you that uh, Excel syllabus, right? So first batch of that is actually starting. But here, people who are taking this advanced Excel. So we are just charging only for advanced Excel. But we are giving that uh, completely free for uh, this one also. The advanced Excel Pro Plus. So the content is here. You can just check this. So both the courses are available here. That is advanced Excel as well as Pro Plus with the same price for advanced Excel only. 
okay and the best thing is about the dashboard designing now our dashboard design syllabus is completely new and this will be the first batch what will be uh, working on i'll just show you the syllabus this we are matching it with the power bi and tablet in excel okay so if you see this we are trying to have this dashboard designing uses of dashboard types of dashboard dashboard designing the layout using images this is completely on the designing part which we are trying to match better than power bi and tableau in excel itself okay to that extent with all these banners navigations and reporting uh, you know sheets so okay in reportings we have understanding of the data and getting the data then we have this menus that is static and dynamic then uh, visualizations like what we saw the visualizations right so we are trying to teach everything in the pro plus itself so that people who are coming to this dashboards it will be very easy for them to work on dynamic way of showing the reports then static report dynamic report interactive reports and linking various reports and we also have this uh, you know reports creating in pivot tables this we actually had done for one or two uh, classes on request now we are officially putting this complete pivot table reports as well here to make it more dynamic and in automation anyways we have this process of automation then uh, here we have this uh, structured and unstructured data also what we are actually trying to pull and here we are trying to import the data without programming which you just saw power query enter with programming that is sometimes what will happen is the data is not in a structured way we are trying to get that data as well and again we have this database connection where we get the data and data visualizations which we are sending it to the powerpoint okay and then we have how to connect with the outlook and get the emails sent so this syllabus is applicable for already who have enrolled also who are enrolling it but here in our app we are actually trying to give this in a very less price that is 4500 only where we used to charge 10500 so this is because of the app people you know who are downloading this app and they are uh, registering there and we are just giving this with this price okay so we are actually trying to change all our syllabus completely all the syllabus not only this excel we have started with excel and dashboard now it will go on with the power bi also we have uh, changed the complete syllabus because that was uh, reviewed by most of the companies and they are very happy about the syllabus what we have and i think uh, there are so many of them uh, you know online who are now uh, sitting here they are attending that and we have changed most of the syllabus we have included most of the topics as well and that will be available for all the batches who are uh, registering and also who are already registered okay now we are implementing for tableau as well then slowly it will be happening for all the other courses as well okay all right so this is what i have for today that is about the ms excel new features in ms excel 365 stop